What up, peeps? Tony Baker here, back with another movie review. This time I'm reviewing Oppenheimer, Christopher Nolan's latest epic filmmaking journey, if you will. It's funny, man. By now, the movie has already been released. It's made $82 million opening weekend, which is a phenomenal opening for a movie that's a three hour drama about physics and science paperwork and hearings keep that in mind 85 million dollars for a three-hour film about 1940s and, and 50s with the hearings and stuff like that science and hearing politics paperwork suits 82 million dollars going up against barbie it's a phenomenal opening. That's just a testament to the filmmaker that is Christopher Nolan. You know he's going to go above and beyond as a director. He going he going to give you top-notch filmmaking. Even if you even if you don't understand what the hell is going on, you you at least respect it. You at least be like, "All right, man. He, he's giving us something. He really thought this out. This is serious business. Let's go." Killian Murphy plays Oppenheimer, the scientist that is considered the father of the atomic bomb. They call him that, even though there's so many other, you know, hands involved in the whole process of, you know, coming to this. It changed the world. The reason why this movie resonates even now is like there's a genuine interest in, you know, science, nuclear weapons, uh, World War II. How, how did it come to be? How did we get to that point? What happened since then? There's so many questions. To me, the World War II era, even World War I, the most fascinating historical times for me. One of, one of, if not the most fascinating time for me. I don't know. I'm just super interested in that time period because a lot went on. It was a lot going on. Germany was really out here like, yo, man, we taking over the world. Who with us in Japan was like, we got your back. You know what I'm saying? There's people out here. The body count alone in World War II, they estimate probably about 60 million on the low end. 60 million people died. That's civilians, that's soldiers, as a result of a World War. 60 million people with Russia, you know, bearing the brunt of the, the highest body count. And so, but the atomic bomb put a pin on that war. That was the final, that was the final nail in the coffin on this world war. And it changed the world. Now it's like, yo, we got nuclear weapons now. And to this day, you know, we're always, I was talking about nuclear arms and, you know, warheads. And so a big question is like, did nuclear weapons actually help prevent a lot of conflicts? You know, we, of course we still have conflicts and war and like, you know, terrible conflicts. We've, we've lost so many lives since World War II due to warfare. But at the same time, has the threat of nuclear war keep a lot of people at bay when it comes to like, y'all want to attack this country, but they, but they got that heat. They got that, you know, they could just launch a nuclear weapon. Then we got to, you got to factor that in now. Like You can come over here if you want, but hey, hey, we got the, we got the, I, I, I press the button. Don't play with us. It's scary. And I know a lot of people look at America like, yo, they got that, they got that heat. And the fact that they developed this, this weaponry, like, you know, the US military came to Oppenheim and was like, yo, I hear what y'all doing out here. Physics, y'all out here, they out here splitting the atom. Germany, Germany is already underway and developing the bombs. We 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 gotta beat them to the punch. Cause, Cause if they get if they get the bomb before we do, we're done. We're dead in the water. And so it, it was a big scramble, like, yo, we got to do this fast. And he chose Oppenheimer because of, he was a brilliant mind. He was popular. They felt like he was the, the guy that could get it done. You know, they was looking at him with a little squinty eye at first. And was just like, all right, we could trust this guy. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of that, too, you had to trust the team. Because you can have some cats out here that's selling information to the other countries, to the Axis, to the highest bidder. So you don't know who to trust, man. It's under wraps. And Oppenheimer was like, well, shit, let's give it a go. Uh, Christopher Nolan has an all-star cast, a lot of familiar faces. You got Killian Murphy, you got Emily Blunt, you got Matt Damon, you got Josh Hartnett, who actually really delivered in this in this film. Robert Downey Jr. is a standout in this film. Um, he really did a great job as Strauss, 
uh, the guy that, you know, sought out Oppenheimer. You got Albert Einstein in this. You got Gary Oldman in this. You got so many familiar faces. I was surprised Michael Caine wasn't in it. I still think he's in it somewhere. I got to rewatch it just to see if I missed him. I really like the film that Christopher Nolan crafted. Now, there is some titties in this movie. I'm just giving y'all the heads up. Some, surprisingly, some titties is, is in here. Some sex. I was not expecting that. I was like, man, we talking about we talking about atomic bombs in, in, in the 40s. Sex? Smash? Penetration? It's in there. So if you're bringing the kids with you, heads up. It's going to come out of nowhere. It's going to be titties in your face. They're going to be right there. And you got to take them with the family. Just give you the heads up. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen titties in a Christopher Nolan film. Yeah, I don't think I've seen sex, titties. This is new ground for Christopher Nolan. Yeah, I don't think we've ever seen this. And a lot of people, you know, Christopher Nolan, he's he's known for using practical special effects. So, you know, we, we was laughing on the internet and stuff like that. Yo, he really gonna blow up a real nuclear weapon to get the shot. He blowing up a real nuclear weapon, man. It's Christopher Nolan, man. He going above and beyond. And I'm surprised he didn't, to be honest with you. Like, can we, can we test the real bombs? Since y'all testing bombs, can we get the footage? So it's the big lead up to the actual development and the testing and the usage of the atomic bomb. That's the big like, oh snap, what's that gonna look like? One of my biggest fears in life is nuclear war. And that's, that's been a concept for me ever since I saw Terminator 2. Even before that, I was scared of it a little bit because I saw this, this thing on Nostradamus and he predicted like this big nuclear war. And so I was always terrified of nuclear war, still am. And this movie didn't help. But the fact that America actually dropped bombs on Japan, two of them, atomic bombs, fat man and little boy, I'm just like, I can't believe that happened. Like so many people died in a moment and then so many people died shortly thereafter from the effects of that. That really happened. The interesting part of this movie, well, another interesting element to this movie is how do you carry that? How do you carry the development of something? From a scientist's perspective, it's like, yo, we scientists are all about theory and testing that theory and then see if, if, if it can be real. See if, see if what we have applied can be real and practical and tangible and can it be done? So as a scientist, you'd be like, yeah, we really developed the bomb. But then on the, on the back end of that, comes the application of what you created. Now you created something that could really destroy the world. Like all out nuclear war could kill us all. Earth would still be here, of course, but we out. So to actually develop that from a scientific standpoint, we have created our own demise in a, in a lab on a base in New Mexico. So now it's just like, damn. So now you're, you're grappling with that. Like, you know, how did how did he carry that as a man? Like, you know, because I think about that all the time. Like, Harry Truman gave the go-ahead to drop the bomb. How did he sleep at night? They portray him as somebody that's like, yo, I was just doing my job. I did, I did this to end the war. But on the back end of that, there was a lot of innocent people that died. It wasn't like they just dropped this on the military base in Japan. They dropped it in the middle of a city. So it's just like, people just living their lives, going to work, going to school. Just existing. No warning. No warning. They're going on about their day and then boom. I pray to God I'm incinerated in the first. I pray to God I'm like right underneath the bomb as it detonates so I can get that million degree heat because I won't even. It would happen so fast I wouldn't even. I'll just see a flash and I'm, I'm out of here. But to the people that survived on the outskirts, but they, they were irradiated and just died a horrible death or they were blinded or they skin burns, organs hanging out, but still alive. Ah, I couldn't imagine holding a carry in that way. We all want to be great in life. We all want to do something major, but goddamn, something like that. I don't know if I want that, man, but forget all that. Y'all want to know the smooth jazz review of Oppenheimer. Well, here it is. Oh yeah. I'm giving Oppenheimer a soft four saxophones out of five. I was kind of let down by the by the actual bomb, but I was compelled throughout. 
I was really invested in the development of this atomic weapon and also what happened on the back end too. I felt like they could have went a little bit further and even though the story is about him, the man, I still wanted further examination into the actual dropping of the bomb on Japan. But I, I was definitely invested because that time period, man. But it's a soft four saxophones. I put it above Dunkirk and Tenet and Insomnia. But, you know, if we compare Christopher Nolan movies, I would still put it underneath. I'll put it underneath even Interstellar and The Dark Knights, Memento, Inception, The Prestige. But yeah, but once again, Christopher Nolan, I'm glad he exists. I'm glad he's out here making movies, man. But I don't know, man. Some of the times, though, I felt like the music was too loud. It was like mad music going on that built up into nothing. He was like, it was just mad orchestra and he was writing on the chalkboard. All right, that's my review of Oppenheimer. Let me know what you thought of the movie in the comment section below. Who stood out for you performance wise? Killian Murphy delivered as Oppenheimer. Like, you know, uh, I was really intrigued by that man. I was like, yo, this dude wasn't born. He wasn't stiff. He was more loose than I expected. I think, as far as Oscars in the future, I think Robert Downey Jr. might nab himself a supporting actor nomination for this. I would not be surprised. And they might give Killian a, a, a nomination for best actor. And low key, Emily Blunt might, she might nab a little, a little nomination. I wouldn't be surprised, but who knows? I definitely feel like Christopher Nolan will definitely get an Oscar nomination as best director, for sure, for sure. And I don't think he's won one yet, has he? He should have got. He should have won one for The Dark Knight, but that's neither here nor there. I think he went up against Snow Country for Old Men that year, though. But anyway, let me know what you thought of the movie in the comment section below. What performances stood out for you? And what's your favorite? What's your favorite? Give me your your top four. Give me your Mount Rushmore Christopher Nolan movies. Let me know in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as usual, we out here.